Coming up here on GMA, we're following those severe storms. More than 380 reports of severe weather over the weekend. That's just Saturday and Sunday, so I'll track that. And of course, that extreme heat from Texas along the Gulf Coast. I'll tell you what it's going to break and who sees the storms next. And the holiday travel crush, another post-pandemic record, shattering this weekend. A very scary incident, too, on the tarmac. How the FAA is keeping travelers safe as we break down the busiest times to fly. And the school year winding down, so how parents can help avoid that summer slide in kids. Don't miss it all on GMA. We have the latest on an overnight crash just ahead on GMSA. President Biden continues his campaign season with a stop in California. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in New York. Coming up, how the president plans to use his trip to the Bay Area to focus on climate. I'm taking a look a li uh, live look outside with live cam folks at 78 degrees. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see just how hot it's going to get today. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto, 6 a.m. on your Monday, June 19th. And it is Juneteenth. It is a holiday today. I know a lot of people have the day off, oh, yeah. and um, it's also a city holiday. So if you are planning to be outside enjoying your time off, please be safe. Isn't that right, Mike? Yeah, I'm, it's the humidity out there is just, I mean, so oppressive. So when you're in the shade, if you're in the shade, it's still very almost overwhelming, kind of hard to breathe at times. It seems like with all that humidity and that's the situation right now. You can see all that haze right there along the horizon and we've got dew point temperatures that are in the mid and upper 70s, even 80 right now. So this is the best way I describe to measure moisture in the atmosphere. When these numbers are below 60, it's really comfortable. You don't necessarily feel the humidity all that much. And you get into the 60s, it's muggy, oppressive in the 70s. And then beyond that, it's just, I don't know, I guess on the next word on the chart would be ridiculously high humidity out there. Heat index right now, 83 in town, 91 is what it feels like at Castroville, 85 up the road at Canyon Lake. And you can add just about oh 30 degrees to those numbers and that's what's going to feel like later on today we're looking at heat index readings up to right around 110 to 115 here in town so we do have the excessive heat warning in effect up until nine o'clock tomorrow night of course ever since last week when the advisories and warnings were issued they've been continually getting bumped up and bumped up and bumped up in time and i wouldn't be surprised if this even gets extended a little bit in toward the middle portion of the week also there's a very small chance for a stray isolated strong to severe storm up in primarily portions of the hill country, although this does include northwestern Bear County. Kind of like yesterday, we had one or two of those storms that popped up pretty nasty and then fizzled out once the uh, got later on into the evening and that's going to be the situation then again tonight. So as far as the uh, forecast today, temperatures will warm up very quickly. A lot of humidity around here this morning. We make it up to 95 at noon. Pretty much the same temperature profile as yesterday and we are going to be getting up to 104. So we'll top yesterday's high temperature by one degree and we're also going to be topping the record by one degree. We're looking at another record high temperature tomorrow. What about the rest of the week? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. I know the big problem yep. is on 35. It still is, Mike. Uh, we have that exit that is blocked off there, 35 at St. Mary's. Get a wide look there at Transguide. Uh, first responders have been out there for quite some time, and this is following an overnight fire that occurred in the area. Let's get a look at that scene a little bit earlier. So this all occurred sometime around 1040 last night. Firefighters were trying to put out a fire that sparked inside a water drainage underneath the highway. So obviously you can see from that video there, it made it difficult for crews to get there to extinguish those flames. So that led to to a big closure there of I-35 southbound, and you can see that smoke that is coming from inside the highway. So again, as a safety precaution, first responders were able to shut the highway down for quite some time, uh, but they did have some difficulty getting to the smoke and getting things extinguished. So again, that has wrapped up, but what we're looking at now is we take it back to Transguide, or Transguide, I should say, our crew still on the scene. Exit is still blocked off there at Brooklyn Avenue. So they're still inspecting, making sure things are okay for drivers to navigate through. But the highway has reopened. It's just that exit there that's going to be closed at the upper level. So be on the lookout for that if your commute takes you through there.
there. Uh, we'll send a push alert a little bit later this morning if we see some congestion that builds up out there. Giving you a wide look now at our map, it is really going to be the story of some of the construction that you see in and around the Alamo City. Although some of the construction is taking place in our neighboring communities, none of it is causing a delay for traffic, at least right now. 37 northbound, it should be about a 30 minute drive if you're heading in from Pleasanton. 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should be within about 17 minutes to the downtown area. But back here, we're going to keep our eyes on this for a little while longer. Let's hope that uh, things will wrap up before we start to see more folks out on the highway. But for now, if you see those flashing lights, you know what to do. Make sure to move over or slow down. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Happening today, a handful of city offices are closed for the Juneteenth holiday. That list includes all city libraries, the municipal court, and all metro health clinics and offices. Some city services will remain available. Animal care services will be open. You can also visit all city parks and trails. New this morning, two people are in the hospital after a police chase ended up in a three car pile up. So San Antonio police say it happened just after 10 last night on the city's southwest side. A red truck was involved in a police chase when police say it ran a light and hit an SUV at the intersection of Southwest Military and New Laredo Highway. So that SUV then hit a white truck. The driver of the SUV had to be rescued by first responders taken in the hospital in serious condition. A child in the SUV also had minor injuries and a passenger in that white truck suffered a broken arm. The driver is accused of caught that is accused of causing the crash had no injuries. No word yet on any charges. And San Antonio firefighters say a trash fire under an overpass caused multiple lanes of I-35 to be shut down overnight. It happened just after 1030, just west of downtown. Fire crews say the fire was inside the water drainage area underneath I-35, so they had a tough time putting it out. The story so far is posted on KSAT.com. Topping your morning headlines, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is on the diplomatic trip to China aimed at strengthening communication between the two world powers. So Blinken met with his Chinese counterpart and discussed topics like the war in Ukraine, the future of Taiwan and climate change. He's the first U.S. diplomat to visit China in five years. Blinken will also be pressing the Chinese to release detained American citizens and to take steps to curb the production and export of fentanyl that's fueling the opioid crisis here in the U.S. And as the campaign trail heats up for the 2024 presidential race, President Biden is on the West Coast hosting a series of events to focus on climate change. As ABC's Ike Jachi reports, a trip comes as the GOP shines a spotlight on their own Republican primary. After kicking off his campaign in the battleground state of Pennsylvania, this morning, President Biden is making his way across the country to California. He'll first travel to Palo Alto in the Bay Area for a mix of campaign fundraisers and official business, highlighting the urgency of taking bold action on the climate. A White House official says the president will tour a coastal wetland and announce more than $600 million for climate adaption projects, funded by the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure law. Projects like better protecting our nation's power grid from extreme weather events, as well as preparing coastal and Great Lakes communities for climate change impacts like sea level rise, tidal flooding, and storm surges. Biden's focus on infrastructure was also a central point of his visit to Pennsylvania over the weekend, where he took an aerial tour of the collapsed portion of I-95 in Philadelphia, a roadway that carries over 160,000 cars a day. There's no more important project right now in the country. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro says a temporary fix to the span is coming much quicker than expected. We will have I-95 reopen within the next two weeks. Meanwhile, in the race for the White House, Republicans continue to attack former President Donald Trump's legal exposure. In a recent interview, Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie criticizing Trump's conduct. We would not be here if Donald Trump had simply returned the documents, the dozens of times the government asked him to return them, the times that the grand jury served a subpoena for them, he waited, waited and waited, defied the government, and then um, wound up having his, his house raided. Members of Biden's campaign say he won't hold regular rallies until later in the campaign season. Biden plans to travel to Chicago and Maryland before the end of the month. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York. 
All right, time is 6.09, temperatures 79 degrees. Still ahead before 6.30, vacation season is here. However, parents and teachers are concerned students will experience learning loss during the summer months. How you can prevent, prevent it, that's next in your GMA First Look. And after the break, one of San Antonio's oldest news outlets reflects on decades of telling stories that would otherwise go unnoticed. 79 degrees at 6.09. It is humid out there on this Juneteenth holiday. If you're going to be out celebrating, take, enjoying your day off, please be stay safe and stay hydrated. We'll be right back. Historically, even the smallest newspapers have been considered the voice of the African American community. And there have been several on the east side over the years, but there are free weekly out every Wednesday that's still around. So along with events and accomplishments, our Jesse de Goyado says the San Antonio Observer also has a harder news edge to interest readers throughout the city. The front page cover stories grab your attention. Just exactly what the San Antonio Observer wants. You're not going to be heard unless you're loud in some way, shape, or form. Imagery is the hook, says its editor and publisher, Stephanie Zarello, and her husband, Wasim Ali. His father, the late Hussein Ali, started the San Antonio Observer in his garage nearly 30 years ago. But unlike other East Side community newspapers, nobody was really talking about politics. The San Antonio Observer took on politics and controversy with headlines like, I'm scared after a rash of police shootings on the east side back then. Did he face any backlash as a result? Oh my God, yeah. A little setback, it's like a slingshot. We get set back, but we'll get shot forward at some time. We just have to be patient. One of their regular columnists, historian Mario Salas, says after all, they owe it to their readers. Black media creates a network uh, of people that want to know what's going on but may not pick it up anywhere else but that newspaper. I think that they know the Observer still has their back. If nobody else will, let me call the Observer. Yet long before the Observer was first published in 1995. This bus bench still says register in stylized letters, the predecessor of the San Antonio Observer. The Ali's bought the San Antonio Register first published in 1931, but no longer in circulation. Much of the focus now, the online version of the San Antonio Observer, extending its reach beyond the East Side community. You know, it's, it's designed to open everybody's minds, to give you a different perspective. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 615, 79 degrees. And we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cabazos to see how those San Antonio roadways are faring. You know, we're taking a look uh, actually out here at I-10 at State Highway 130. Let's get a wider look. I just thought it was a pretty cool shot, and it looks like we may have lost it. But check out the sky out there. This is actually in Lockhart, a little bit past uh, Seguin, and you can really see traffic from earlier. really wasn't showing anything, but I thought it was an interesting view for anyone that was heading out in that direction. We'll see if we, we'll see if we can get that shot back up from Transguide in just a moment. But I do want to bring your attention back here into town. I-35 southbound, the upper level there at Brooklyn Avenue is still closed, and that is due to a fire that was reported out there underneath the drainage system earlier last night. So uh, first responders had to shut down a portion of 35 for quite some time, and it looks like things have reopened. Just that exit remains closed. So be on the lookout for crews as they work to wrap things up. But let's give you a wide look now at our map. You can still see the big story of the morning will be a lot of the active construction that we tend to see, and a lot of it is going to ramp up right here along two 281 on the north side of San Antonio curb construction. Just be on the lookout for this because it starts at nine in the morning should wrap at three in the afternoon, and this is going to take us all the way to the end of the work week. We'll see a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road at Borgfeld Road. So my advice to you scan this QR code because I've just updated the list of current closures on our website ksat.com slash traffic. So we still have a lot of closures to get through throughout the month of June, so always good to just Plan your commute ahead of time. That's a very helpful QR code because it gets you in the know before you have to go. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. The heat. Yeah. <laughs> the heat. Takes the words out of everyone's mouth when you're talking about the heat. So yes. before we, you know, t talk about the heat, because we really don't want to talk about that, the clouds yesterday, yeah. mm -hmm. my husband, I was like in bed, and he was like, Sarah, get out here. Look at the sky. Like a they marshmallow were... casserole. <laughs> was it, was it this? <laughs> 
Yes. Take a look. Yes. The, they are Mammatus clouds and usually oh. associated with very strong thunderstorms, as was the case up there in parts of the hill country. And we had some uh, pretty decent sized hail and these sort of hang down from the bottom of those those thunderstorms and the, the, a lot of times those cumulonimbus clouds because we had, of course, the the tops of that blowing off there af, uh, way up high, but this is obviously on the bottom side of it there. But yeah, it looked like uh, looked like cotton balls, looked like kind of marshmallows hanging down there. So a lot of folks saw that and took some great pictures. Thank you very much for that. And that may be the situation again today, not necessarily those particular clouds, but to have a couple of strong, potentially severe storms. Clouds starting off this morning, just sort of trapping all that that heat and humidity in here and throw it all together. It feels like 91 still at Casterville, 81 Valverde, 83 out there at the airport. And later on today, we are looking at heat index readings about where it was yesterday. 110 higher than that. 112 in Honda, 116 in Carrizo Springs, 117 there. Gonzalez as well as Cotula. Basically dangerously high, brutal heat, dangerously high heat index readings. And again, those numbers are taken in the shade. So if you're in the sun, it's even hotter than that because you're not just feeling the air temperature and the, the humidity mixed in, but the sun's heating you up as well. But as far as the excessive heat warning, it's in effect up until tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. So it's just going to be staying hot. Hot today, we're looking at a record high temperature. Same thing tomorrow. Now we've got clouds starting off this morning. What would be nice is if we had a repeat of what happened on Saturday. Clouds hung in there. Temperatures stayed only at about normal. It's not going to be the situation today, so we'll have a lot more sunshine and those temperatures are just going to be spiking. Then we start to see some of those showers and thunderstorms trying to develop up there in parts of the hill country and the hope would be to work their way further south. I think this computer model is a little generous as far as with some of the rain around here, but at least there will be one or two of them out there. And of course, one or two may be strong, potentially severe as we go on into later on this evening. High winds, large hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. So I mentioned 104, new record today. Current record's 103. That's what we hit yesterday. 104 tomorrow. And temperatures will ease ever so slightly. Only a few degrees. We'll take anything we can get, though. Still plenty of blazing sunshine. If if you really care, summer officially begins on Wednesday. That's the longest day of the year on paper. And then at least the days start getting shorter after that. But please. <laughs> but our historically oh, hottest time of the year is still yet to come, which is the first couple of weeks of August. So. Oh, boy. Mm hmm. Thank you, Mike. Mm hmm. Thank you, Mike, I'm folks. Sorry to our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we open that door, that wave of heat just comes right We're in. We're in this together, guys. Yes, we sure are. Folks, time is 620, temperature 79 degrees. Just ahead, Netflix is giving the green light to a new reality show based on Squid Game. When you can start binging it, that's next. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I was diagnosed with AFib. The first inkling that something was wrong was I started to notice that I couldn't uh, do things without losing my breath. I couldn't make it to the airport. Every like 20 or 30 yards, I had to sit down and get my breath. Every physical exertion seemed to exhaust me. And finally, I went to the hospital where I was diagnosed with AFib. When I first noticed symptoms, which kept coming and going, I should have gone to the doctor and told them what was happening. Instead, I tried to let it pass. If you experience irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, or lightheadedness, you should talk to your doctor. AFib increases the risk of stroke about five times. I want my experience to help others understand the symptoms of atrial fibrillation. When it comes to your health, this is no time to wait. In this morning's GMA First Look, school's out. But there's a downside to this school vacation, summer learning loss. As a teacher, I do know about the summer. The summer slide is a real thing, for sure. I see it every fall when we get back to school. I think we try to do a lot that doesn't seem like schoolwork. A 2020 study found that students lost on average between 17 and 28 percent of their school year gains in reading and between 25 and 34 percent of math gains, all during summertime. 
Plus, a new crop of educational games can not only stave off learning loss, but supplement reading challenges as national data on proficiency shows kids are falling behind. If your child needs math practice, figure out creative ways that they can do math. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll share some tips on how to tackle summer slide with your kids. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. In your consumer headlines, a change in standards by Meta. The tech company is lowering the minimum age for Quest headsets to 10 years old. Parents will have to approve the creation of an account for kids under 13. Now, Meta says profiles for those children will default to private. Google is expected to make a big design change to the next generation of its flagship Pixel phones. The Pixel 8 Pro will reportedly feature a flat display, which is different from the curved screen on the two previous Pixel models. So Android Authority also says the new phone will have a much brighter panel. And Netflix is out with the first trailer for Squid Game, The Challenge. It's a reality show based on the super popular South Korean series. The trailer hints that red light, green light will be part of the show. You can watch it starting in November. All right, folks, time is 625, temperature 79 degrees. Still ahead at 630, mental health in young people is becoming a crisis across the nation. How new classes for teens right here in the Alamo City is hoping to empower them. Plus, did you know Juneteenth has its own flag? We've got some other things you might not know about the holidays still ahead. Taking a look out at the roads, you can see the sun is up in that trans guy shot, shot at 10 and I-30. Stephen Cavasso is giving us the latest on the traffic when we come back. This morning on GMSA, a bill inspired by a deadly dog attack right here in San Antonio has been shot down by Governor Greg Abbott. We'll look at why and what happens next. And some Father's Day plans went down the drain at the rim on the city's north side. How businesses were forced to deal with the damage next. 79 degrees at 629. You can see the sun is up and you can see that humidity just kind of hanging around the Alamo City. And Mike has some unfortunate news <laughs> on the <laughs> forecast. Good morning at 630 on your Juneteenth holiday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us and joined by Jonathan Cotto. That's right, Sarah. It's a pleasure to start this week with you and, and also the heat. We have to welcome it, Mike. The humidity and do the we, heat seem we not have to, to go anywhere. We're stuck with it. <laughs> we have to embrace it. Go Again, Mike. it's like the, the house guest that doesn't know when to leave. Mm. So <laughs> Saturday we had a bit of a break because the clouds didn't stick around a good portion of the day. And then yesterday, of course, sun came out, temperatures shot up. We got up to 103 in the afternoon and we had heat index readings, most of the area well above 110, even 115 in some spots. And as Sarah was pointing out, you can just sort of see that humidity just kind of hanging over the area. The clouds have kind of held that in, held in the, the heat as well. Dew points at 79 right now. Temperature, excuse me, dew point 76, temperature 79. The normal low is 73, so well above that. And boy, when that number gets up there mid and even upper 70s around the area, it is just miserably humid. And that's the situation. Dew points at 80 at Castroville, 77 New Braunfels, Randolph, Stinson, everywhere. It's just ridiculously high humidity. So we've got 91 is the heat index right now at Castroville, 85 Canyon Lake, and 83 out there at the airport as well as at Randolph. Mold is on the low side, and we do have excessive heat warm warnings in effect up through tomorrow night. Today and tomorrow are going to be brutally hot like yesterday. And then also one or two of those storms are going to be popping up sort of like what we had yesterday. Just a couple of them that moved in from the hill country. And that's the, the chance today, one or two of them to pop up. And some, if they do pop, could be strong to potentially severe with high winds as well as large hail. So this morning, just basically hot and humid out there. Record high 104 is 103 is the current record and going for 104 today. But again, the heat index is going to be 110 plus a stray storm. 104 again tomorrow. Once again, a new record high temperature and then still hot the rest of the week. Not quite as hot. Maybe shave off a couple of degrees, shave off a few degrees with the humidity and the dew point temperatures. But yeah, this heat wave does continue. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. 
Still there? It's still there, still Mike. There 35. Yeah, and keep this in mind. This all started around 1040 last night. Let's get a wide look at Trans Guide. A little bit of a shaky shot there, but our friends over there have been scoping through the area with their cameras, and you can see that we have flashing lights out there. If you're driving through I-35 southbound, remember that exit at the upper level at McCullough, at, pardon me, at Brooklyn Avenue is closed at this time. As we see, first responders have been out there following an overnight fire. Let's show you what I'm talking about here. This all started sometime around 1040 last night. Last night, as I mentioned earlier, this was a fire that, according to first responders, said occurred in the water drainage area underneath the highway. You see some of the smoke that's coming out of that area and first responders working uh, to clear it up, but they had some trouble. You can see that as they're inspecting through that area, they were trying to find a way to get inside to make sure that they could extinguish those flames. That's why they had to shut down a portion of I-35 overnight. Now that has since reopened, but what we are seeing is the exit to Brooklyn Avenue still blocked off at this time time earlier around 430. We sent a push alert about it, but bringing it back here to our trans guide camera shot looks like we may have to send another one because they are still out there and we want you to be prepared for what you can see if you have to navigate through that particular stretch of town. Exit to Brooklyn Avenue closed right now. Let's hope we'll see a better update soon. But as we take a drive over here, I noticed that there was also a small slowdown if you were heading into uh, the downtown area from I-35 southbound at O'Connor Road. Looks like that has improved and traffic's moving pretty normal around 57 miles per hour. Now let's get a wide look at our map here. A lot of construction. I've been talking about it throughout the morning. None of it impacting traffic, at least just yet. But if we still see that exit blocked off, it's likely we'll start to see some of the red build up on our map. I'll keep a close eye on that, but make sure that you have your case at map. Ma ma pardon me, your case at app downloaded on your mobile phone with the notifications turned on. So if anything pops up on the roadways, we'll be sure to let you know guys. Thank you, Stephen. Happening today, a handful of city offices are closed for Juneteenth holiday. Apologize for that technical difficulty on your screen right now. So that list includes all city libraries, the municipal court, and all metro health clinics and offices. Some city services will remain available, like animal care services will be open. You can visit all city parks and trails will also be open. And some Father's Day plans went down the drain yesterday after several popular businesses at the rim were forced to tell their customers there was a water main break. This video on your screen was taken by Oscar Carrero. Those businesses said the break caused water to flood a parking lot, creating a small stream down the street. The Santico's Palladium closed temporarily. Now, officials with Santico's Entertainment initially posting on social media to let moviegoers know all shows were canceled. But around 6 p.m., they updated the statement saying Santico's Palladium was reopening and all shows at 8 p.m. or later would go on as scheduled. The post added the bar and restaurant were staying closed. And that's what customers with Father's Day dinner plans at Brasau Brazilian Steakhouse were forced to deal with. According to their Facebook post, they had to close their doors for the rest of the day. Management offered apologies and stressed that the water main break left the restaurant without water. Kset has reached out to the Saws for confirmation and details. We will let you know what they tell us. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a 25 year old unleashed his anger on a five month old baby and now they want your help finding him. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Corey Berry repeatedly abused the baby boy. On Friday, Salazar says the child's mother, Jada Rogers, rushed the baby to the hospital after the baby developed a fever and was left lethargic. Soon after, deputies were called in and told the baby had multiple fractures, bite marks on his face and bruises. Salazar says Rogers was questioned and gave deputies false information to steer them away looking for Barry. Deputies learned the baby had been in Barry's care for several weeks. Whether this abuse occurred all in one episode or over the course of this whole baby's life, uh, this baby's whole short life, um, there's just no excuse for it. And again, we want to get this this monster into custody sooner rather than later. The baby's mother was arrested Friday and charged with serious bodily injury to a child through omission. However, Barry, that man on your screen, still on the run. Call the sheriff's office if you have any information on his whereabouts.
Also developing now, Governor Greg Abbott has vetoed a bill that would have increased the criminal penalties for pet owners after a dog is deemed dangerous. House Bill 4759, or the Raymond Najera Act, had made it through the House and Senate and was sent to Abbott's desk last month. It was written by San Antonio area lawmakers after the death of Najera in February. The 81-year-old was attacked by a pack of dogs that were previously deemed dangerous. The Ramon Najera Act would have allowed for anonymous reporting to animal care services and would have made it easier for ACS to remove dangerous dogs. This morning, mental health experts are sounding the alarm on mental health in young people and most believe it's becoming a nationwide crisis. That's why professionals across Yalmo City are offering new classes for teenagers, empowering them and improving their communication skills. As Camelia Juarez reports, a local mom tells Case that her kids have started to open up to her after taking these classes. When the pandemic came, uh, they I noticed that emotionally they were held back. Latoya Morgan says her two children became closed off and consumed by screen time after the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why she enrolled them in the Bridges to Care program through the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI. Mental health specialists bring these classes to nearly 80 faith-based congregations around San Antonio. Morgan says her kids started opening up after the classes. Yeah, but now it's more like, okay, well, this is what's going on at school. This is what's going on with my friends. Like, it's just a more conversation is being had since she's been helping with us all together with the um, expressing themselves. The classes teach mindfulness, boundaries, and elevating communication in relationships. Donna Acosta with NAMI says these lessons give teenagers a lifelong tool belt. It is about empowering our youth with knowing the language and how to talk about um, what's going on for themselves and how to identify those trust adults to be able to reach out to and help them support them. Parents are kept in the loop about lessons. Morgan says she's learning along with her children. It just seems like they're able to learn now how to express because even as adults, we don't know how to express ourselves sometimes. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Well, if you feel like there's been more shootings and crime recently, you are not alone. We've covered numerous high-profile shootings, and it seems like we've seen a jump in violent crimes over the last few months. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus joined us yesterday on Leading SA to talk about what is going on our Max Massey reports. Chief McMahon has joined us. We talked about a lot. We talked about how technically violent crime is down, even though arrests are up. And we also talked about what the last string of those high profile violent crimes have looked like and some of the reasoning behind them. We also talked about accountability. Here's a bit of our conversation. If people who commit crimes understand that there's no real accountability for or, or consequence for what they do, uh, they're, they're likely, and this is a, a study, they're likely to commit crime again. There has to be accountability. They have to understand that for sure something's going to happen to them as a result of the crime that they commit. And I'm speaking not only about violent crime, but I'm speaking about property crimes as well. The chief also went into detail about a new study that showed the need for more officers. He said that the preliminary study showed the need for more than 360 more police officers. Now, that was just a bit of our conversation. You can see the whole interview right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. All right, time is 640, temperature 79 degrees. Up next, did you know Juneteenth has its own flag? We've got some other things you might know about the holiday in just a couple moments. Welcome back. As we celebrate Juneteenth this morning, we'd like to point out that it only recently became a federal holiday. That's right. And because of that, there's still a lot you may not know about the historical event. Leslie Hudson brings us all those details. Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, whatever you call it, Juneteenth is the day African-Americans celebrate the day the last slaves were freed. It's important, especially today, but it was important in the past because you're talking about a group of people who were in a society, but they were not of the society because they were enslaved. One way that Juneteenth is celebrated is by spreading knowledge. First of all, the name Juneteenth actually came from a white general. 
His name was General Gordon Granger. It wasn't just Texas who had not legally abolished slavery. And 1995, it was discovered that Mississippi never abolished slavery. So 2013 was when Mississippi slavery was legally abolished. Another little known fact is there is a Juneteenth flag. The flag is red, white, and blue, and includes the star of the Texas flag and the new star representing a new freedom and a new people. It has, in my opinion, even a larger impact that goes beyond African American history because it's had an impact on U.S. history. I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. Well, the more you know. Yeah. 645, 79 degrees. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos to see how those San Antonio roadways are looking. Stephen. Ooh, well, guys, we still have this problem here at 35 at St. Mary's. Let's get a wider look at Transguide. So this is what I've been talking about pretty much all morning long. We've been keeping an eye on this really since it happened around 1040 last night. This is that fire that occurred in the drainage system. It was actually a trash, a trash fire, which made it difficult for first responders to get to because it was underneath that drainage system in the highway. But you could see that they still have that exit blocked off earlier a portion of 35 southbound was completely closed. It's obviously reopened because we're seeing traffic move through there, but they still have that exit at Brooklyn Avenue. Pardon me. That is blocked off and you could see no buildup just yet. It's still early enough to where we're not seeing a lot of traffic that's moving through the downtown area, but be on the lookout for this area if you have to travel through wide look at the map now doesn't really show a whole lot else. We aren't seeing a lot of congestion building up, so that's great news, but make sure to always know what is happening on the roadways because we do have some rail and painting repairs that will take place on long I-10 in Kendall County. This work begins today and should wrap around three in the afternoon, but it's going to take us all the way to the end of the work week, June 23rd. Alternating lane closures on the frontage roads in both directions from State Highway 46 to US 87. But other than that, guys, we do have this problem still there at 35 at Brooklyn is where that exit is closed off. This is just the shot at St. Mary's Street, and I, I have not seen a whole lot of progress out there, uh, but you know, sometimes these scenes are a lot more complicated, which is why we want to make sure we give those crews plenty of room, make sure to move over or slow down. Because when you think about it, the drain is buried in, in the, the highway, the concrete. Yes. Yeah. So they're probably making sure that the road is safe before. Well, yeah. They yes, open. the integrity. They always want to make sure that integrity right. of, of the uh, structure is okay before drivers travel through. Because, uh, you know, we saw what happened in Philadelphia. Exactly. It was awful, but this does not seem as serious. But we want to make sure that we watch out. I wonder what they do. It's like get a giant, you know, one of those snakes to clean out the plumbing or something, and okay. not too far from here. <laughs> All right, uh, take a look outside. This hopefully makes you forget about the, the excessive heat for a minute. There is Mama to be Cardinal. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been hanging out in the tree for a little bit, and the male <laughs> comes by, brings her a little bit of food, flowers occasionally, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a little, little bobble and everything. Anyway, but uh, keep sending in pictures once uh, she actually becomes a mommy there. Great shot. Thank you very much for that one, Yvonne. All right, it is just, I mean, murky looking out there. Low clouds, all the humidity hanging around here. The clouds have been kind of holding that in. And 83 is what it feels like in town. Same thing, Port SA at Randolph, at Stinson, 85 Canyon Lake, and Castroville. Well, it's actually dropped down a little bit in the heat index from 91 down to 89 degrees. Then later on this afternoon, we are going to be hitting a high temperature of 103. Excuse me, this was yesterday. 103, Gonzales 103, 111 in Catula, and we're going to top that. Today, it will, tell you, it will set a record, I can't talk right now, a 104, and we're going to see a lot of even 111, higher than that, and that's just the actual air temperature. We've got um, readings all around the low hundreds, all around the uh, metropolitan area as the day rolls on. Temperatures this morning, we were going to be seeing a little bit of sunshine. It would be great if it was like Saturday where the clouds held on in there. It just does not look like it's going to be the situation, though. And we're going to make it up to 95 at noon. Already the heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds, what it feels like. And we are looking at those heat index readings to be May 113, 115, or even higher than that. And a high temperature today of 104. And, of course, excessive heat warnings are in effect up through tomorrow night. Also, one or two storms like yesterday we had those popping up up there in the hill country and that's going to be the situation again today just one or two of them may be strong potentially severe and even though this risk area goes down into bear county 
I highly doubt we see anything around here as far as any uh, storms, rain period, or strong or severe. Here's the high pressure, which is sitting over northern Mexico and right over Texas. That thing just stays in place for the next couple of days, and that's why it just kind of moves on in here and really tightens its grip on us. Hopefully it eases a little bit as the uh, the week goes on, but still there's no big change in this overall weather pattern. Minor fluctuations, which means, okay, temperatures won't be as hot by the end of the week, but still well above normal. Normal right now is 93 and yeah, we're 10, 11 degrees above that today, tomorrow, Wednesday, a mm. little bit lower temperatures by the end of the week, but still the heat goes on. Please be careful out there. Yep. Yes. Thank and you. Mike. Hydrate. Thank you. Time is 650 temperature 79 degrees. All right. We can see the sun up now that humidity hanging around. Like we said, if you have to be outside today on this federal holiday, please be safe. Wear sunscreen, stay hydrated. We'll be right back with a final look at traffic and weather. Right now on KSAT.com, HEB will be opening a rebranded convenience store with more food options in Lytle today. HEB says Fresh Bites will have a grand opening this morning at 9 a.m. will also include a true Texas tacos restaurant. The store will be open daily starting at 4 a.m. The true Texas tacos will be open daily from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. No, 2 p.m. That'd be 2 a.m. is a long day. And <laughs> unclear when these new stores will start popping up in San Antonio. And just in time for the summer, there's a new Margaritaville Resort in South Padre with 200 guest rooms and 50 beachfront condos. South Padre joins the list of Margaritaville Resorts alongside Crystal Beach and Lake Conroe. Reservations are already open and you'll never lose your shaker of salt mm. at these beautiful resorts. I like what you did there. <laughs> okay, uh, Stephen, it looks like things have cleared up at 35 in Brooklyn. I think we're going to get there eventually. Uh, I still see some flashing lights out there, but let's get a look as we are. see first responders have closed off that exit at Brooklyn Avenue. Remember, this is because a trash fire occurred in the drainage system overnight, and they had to shut down a portion of I-35 southbound near Brooklyn, but that has since reopened, but that exit is still blocked off. We're going to keep a very close eye on this spot for quite some time, but uh, let's Let's hope that we'll see some progress. It doesn't appear that it's causing such an impact with traffic, but just make sure to watch out for those first responders, Mike. Long Margaritaville makes me think of cheeseburger in paradise, and I want a cheeseburger right now. But anyway, <laughs> and uh, a margarita. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, lots of heat, lots of humidity. Feels like 83 in town, 89 heat index right now. Castroville, and throughout the day, we are going to hit 104. Record high temperature, one or two stray storms up to the north. We do have the excessive heat warnings in effect through tomorrow night, and also a stray, strong, potentially severe storm in parts of the hill country later on today. It's just going to remain hot the rest of the week. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you again at 9. GMA is next.